day three at the Ancient Festival, which of course features the Grand National. My name is Patrick Canelli. I am in the company of Rory Delargy and Joe Logue. I hope you listened to all of the winners we gave on Thursday and Friday. <laughs> and uh, as Joe laughs, yes, we're recording Thursday, one o'clock. So we have yet to see a single race at the festival. We're going to tip up seven winners on the Saturday because biases can appear and maybe those biases won't be any use to you so you know you've got a nice kind of angle here where you don't know what's happening on the front yeah whatever okay um joe how are you uh, well, as always you well yeah yeah very good nothing's changed in the last two minutes so all good yeah the fourth wall disappears uh as we literally just finished <laughs> recording day two podcast rory since the last spoke to you um has anything happened in your life uh well, charlie madge came in and knocked on the door and uh, said hello and i said i'm doing a podcast charlie and he went away again Good so, stuff. Aside from that. Excellent. You're really well in control of the of the kids there, to be fair. Um, I didn't ask He's you where you were in the world. Charlie Madge is, is my 75-year-old next-door neighbour. Not my right. son. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't hear the Madge part, but okay. Uh, why is the 75-year-old neighbour just knocking in, looking for he milk? Just, he tends to just come in, to be perfectly honest. Um, but, um, you know, so usually it's it, it's either, I'm doing a podcast, Charlie, or as, I'm not wearing any trousers, Charlie, you know, one of the two. But... <laughs> And does, oh, he, he, does, he, so. does he still come well, in well, after you shared well, you've no trousers on? I do the on. podcast without any trousers on, Charlie. <laughs> well, as long as he takes uh, the hint and doesn't actually uh, appear uh, after you've given him those messages. <laughs> um, right. Uh, you've some notes from producer Mark and producer Kira. Six places on the national, which we'll be talking about later on. Of course, don't forget that uh, we are paying six places and plenty of you will be getting stuck into that. The Punters panel episode that's live on the Paddy Bear Racing YouTube channel is fantastic. Mick, Mick Fitz, the star of the show, but Ruby and Frank were there as well. <laughs> really good questions. And on that channel, check out Finders Keepers uh, every morning of Aintree, where we will be dishing out money five grand at a, go, at a time into various Paddy Power accounts. All you got to do, watch the show and hopefully one of the, uh, one of your account will be, uh, well, the five grand will drop into and all you got to do is withdraw it. So that's as uh, simple as that's 8.30 on Saturday morning. Uh, horsepower, definitely worth checking out if you haven't already. That's horsepwr.co.uk. Uh, really good uh, BHA website or inspired by the BHA and others. I know Ken Blake uh, on the Betfair team has been very heavy in that as well. And cheat sheets, no Ruby Walsh here, but loads of Ruby and others, including Patrick Mullins, available on the Paddy Power News website. Uh, again, just put a news Paddy Power into Google and it'll pop up and they've got all the selections for entry. Okay, that's it. Done. Notes. I love that part of the show. It's my favourite part of the show. It really is. Uh, right, let's talk Saturday racing and let's talk winners. The 120 is our first race on Saturday. It is the handicap hurdle over three miles. I suppose there's no equivalent race at Cheltenham uh, because you don't have to qualify for this race like you did the pretemps. West Balboa, you're... F- Look at this. Skelton's at it again. Uh, 11s, 8s, 6s, six, 5s, six to 1 now for West Balboa with form figures of 0, 8, 6. Who cares? It doesn't matter. Skelton trains it. 6 to 1, Cuthbert Dibble. Gw- uh, Gwynny Mayboy for Dan Skelton. Uh, 6 to 1. Johnny Who for the uh, John Joe O'Neill team is 13 to 2, 8 to 1, Mamra. And 10s bar. Is West Balboa a handicap lot, Rory Delargy? She, she's not a blot. She's 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 uh, one four one. Uh, she won this race off um, of six point lower last year, so she's not absolutely thrown in. Um, and the question is, how much do you think she's going to improve for the run last time out? I she will she'll benefit from the return to this trip. That's that's definitely um, definitely the case. And she got no problem on heavy ground. She was a winner of the um, of the Lanzarote last year on ground that was barely <coughs> rich, but only three horses in a, in a massive field finished that day. Um, which I remember very well because I, I backed the horse that would have finished fourth. He pulled up before the last at 33s uh, uh, each way. Um, and she's got a very good chance. But as I said, with, with as with his runner Katira on, on Friday, the market has cottoned on um, to the fact that uh, the Dan's got them laid out. And, you know, you look, if you hark back to Cheltenham, you were getting reasonable prices about even longer Dan. Unexpected Party was a, was a good price on the, in the, um, Grand Daniel, who'd been absolutely laid out for that as well. And Dan had, had, was pretty straightforward that he, he thought he had the horse in, in the, the right conditions for the first time. So, you know, you, it's a little bit after the Lord Mayor's show with the skeleton runners. But at the same time, you know perfectly well they have been prepared with the entry in mind and you have to respect them as a result. So I do like West Balboa's chance, but I think she's probably slightly underpriced here um, as a result. It's not like she's completely under the radar, but, you know, she's been, she's been running in good company for a couple of seasons. We know exactly what she's capable of. One for one is the right sort of mark for her. And she's capable of winning, but the market knows that. 
Uh, I didn't find that it's a particularly easy race. The one thing I, I, I didn't think it was massively competitive. I thought there were a few, you know, quite a lot of horses with a little bit to prove in the race. And the two I liked um, at, at double figure prices. Well, I say double figure prices, I'll have to check one of those. Johnson's Blue, I quite liked. Um, he won at uh, Doncaster last time. And it's you can easily say that he's he's partially um, partially treated by the handicap for having got up five pounds for winning that race because he wouldn't have won had the leader not fallen um, at the, the second last hurdle that day. He'd, he'd, he'd made the running. Um, that absolute pig of um, Henry Daly's had come to win the race. I forget his name in the in the um the Trevor Hemmings colour. It's always with a lot of ability, but just a bit of a monkey. He was wearing a visor for the first time, uh, Bridge North. Uh, and he was looking a reformed character when he came down at the second last. He's been beaten since, by the way. Um uh, and Johnson's Blue has been up five pounds for that. But he was a level length player of the third. That was his first run since um an abortive chase debut at Kelso in September. So only his second run since winning a uh, pretense qualifier in good style at Hayduck. Um, last season, and he's entitled to improve for it. He impressed me when he won at Hayduck um, in February. He made all the running that February last year. That is made all the running that day uh, to beat the changing man, who I really fancied for the pretense and ran pretty well in the final itself. So although he's gone up in the race, I thought Johnson's Blue would remain competitive, and there should still be a bit more to come from him. He's well suited by a flat left-handed track um, on soft ground as well as he shown both at Doncaster last time and in that Hayduck race. So entry should be ideal for him. And he would be top of my list. And the other one I would consider there. What price is Honor Gray? Honor Gray Fourteens. is an oh, thank you. Yeah, I think you, you can argue Honor, Honor Gray should be a little bit shorter as well. He strictly on the um on the ratings, he needs to improve a little bit, but he's won four of his last five, um, going back um uh, you know, eighteen months or so. Um he made a winning uh, reappearance off a long break at Ascot last time out. Prior to that, he was a course and distance winner here of an eight pound lower mark. Returned from that absence to win very gamely at Ascot from Supreme Gift um, and should come on from that. Ben Pauling has done just really, really well with his handicap hurdlers, um, particularly since the turn of the year. And I think he's he's probably got a few who will do well at this meeting. And Honor Gray, I thought, deserved to be a little bit shorter um, than 14s based on, um, on the pattern of his form and the fact that he's there's a chance that he'll improve for that for that run given um, the length of his break. I suppose if you will, a few people might worry about him bouncing off that, but he's been given plenty of time to recover and didn't um, uh, wasn't tempted to get him qualified for the pretense. And I think Honor Gray will run really well. So that'd be my two against the field in a very tough race. Lovely. I hate the spelling of Honor Gray. They've left out the U. They've gone the American spelling of Honor, and it just. Breaking out in hives here, lads. Uh, right, so Johnson's Blue and Honor Gray for Rory. Joe? Thought it was tough as well. And um, obviously going through the racing post without prices, looking for my selection. And first one I came down on was West Balboa, favourite. Cuppert Dibble, my second option, second favourite. And then went to Gwenny May Boy, third favourite. So I said, right, I'll stick with my first option. And look, we discussed West Balboa on yesterday's pod. And um, look again, like stood out a mile. Um Skelton's absolutely bomb. I think he had a three timer yesterday um, in market raising. I think it was so. Uh, yeah, look, uh, she was kind of put up as a stairs hurdle horse to start the year. She won a conditions hurdle at Aintree, beating Bruin up a storm by twelve lengths, getting plenty of weight that day, um, and then sent off three to one favourite for the long walk hurdle at Ascot, and that was supposed to be um, the road to the stairs hurdle for her, but she was really keen that day. Um, she's ridden, held up, and just kind of never got into the race, and the plan kind of fell apart. I think Skelton kind of redirected her then and um, Tristan Durrell took a ride uh, at Sandown she was never really put in the race and then Keenan Woods took a ride and again she was never really put in the in the race and she just looks like she's being laid out for this I think it's hard enough to oppose her even though there is a, a huge field to to pass by for her but um, I think she's she's entitled to improve like Rory said she, she won this last year off 135 she's 141 now I think she's you know entitled to have pr- improved naturally now rising 8 um, or turning 8 even and uh yeah, look, I just think it's very hard to pose the skeletons in these handicap hurdles. You have to um, respect them. He's obviously going for champion trainer and, and you know, putting all his eggs in the basket of, of big handicap hurdles. He's laying them out and, yeah, look, stands out a mile. I think West Balboa is the one to beat here and she's the one I'm siding with. 
All right, sticking with her, uh, West Balboa, and as mentioned, Johnson's Blue and Honor Grey each way prices. Ferrari, that's the opener. Uh, move on to the 155, the first of the grade ones on Saturday. It's the Mersey Novice Hurdle. And, ooh, look at this. Brighter days ahead, looking for compensation. The 15 to 8 joint favourite, and Gordon Elliott. My God, if he gets beaten with the mare he loves so much by a horse who he also loves so much but doesn't represent him anymore in Caldwell Potter who now, of course, runs in the Hale Silks with Paul Nichols, the joint favourite. Then you've got Willie Mullins double-pronged with Jimmy Desoy and Il Atlantique at 11-2 and 13-2 and then 16's bar. I have to go straight to you, Rory, because um, Friday is ahead against the boys. Oh, Joe, your thoughts on the Mersey? Um, yeah, look, it's a cracking race, really. It's interesting. We'll see over the next couple of days, uh, like we said, we're recording here Thursday, how Gordons are running. Uh, he is two really well thought of horses here and like you said he formerly had uh, Caldwell Potter but brighter days ahead obviously everyone's familiar with her has, has a huge reputation well fancied for um for the mayor's novice at Cheltenham and Jack Kennedy said that they didn't go quick enough for her that was over two miles and um, she was winning over two mile five at Navin yes before that so look she is a stayer uh, there's no secret there she steps back up to two and a half miles here on soft ground and and you know is, is rightfully towards the front of the market although I've tipped the Gordon Elliott horse already. I don't think I'd want to be taking a very short price about them, to be honest. Um, I'd like to see them go and win a couple of races before I do that. Um, we don't have that luxury now. Um, so she's one that I'd be looking to avoid. Staffordshire not is very interesting again for the same yard. He's a much bigger price. Um, 16s, I think, currently. He was smashed off the boards at Turles. Is the Mercedes-Benz uh, grade three won by Largy Hill? Uh, or is the Michael Purcell, sorry. And... Uh, Look, Jack apparently came back and said that he didn't handle the track that day. Um, Turles is a kind of a funny old track. It's tight enough. And this guy looks a real horse for the future. Kind of a big lump, pure, you know, Gigginstown type of horse. Um, Aintree is, is kind of a bit tight, but it's, it's look, it's nothing like Turles. I think he should run very well at a price. But again, worried about stable form. But um, look, Caldwell Potter is the one for me. I, I, I'm absolutely in love with this horse. I, I, he's a top notcher in Ireland. Um, and obviously had to go to the sales and, you know, they forked out over 700 grand, I think, from, and Nickel said straight away that he's skipping Cheltenham and Aintree's the plan and, and he shows up here, which is a huge positive. He's going to be fresh. He's going to be targeted at this. Um, he would have had time to settle into new yards and kind of get over the, the whole ordeal of the sales, which, you know, again, could be used as, a, as an excuse for Staffordshire or not. But for Caldwell Potter, the, the trip is perfect for him. The ground is perfect. It's going to be proper testing here and his best form in Ireland's on proper winter ground uh, at tracks like Navin um, when he won his maiden hurdle. And, and like there was no doubt who was going to win it before. He was absolutely smashed off the boards and then backed it up in grade one company at, at Christmas in Leperstown, which is, is always good to see. And, and look, he's a huge uh, high ceiling. The form maybe could be a little bit better. Um at the race of Christmas, obviously Predator's goal is second that day. There was only kind of two of the minute and uh, Predator's goal is turned over to DRF. But um, yeah, look, I, I think he's had plenty of time um, to kind of get over the sales, get over the yards, which Nickel said straight away is going to be aimed at this. Um, I think he's, yeah, like I said, a proper top notcher. I think he's the one to beat here. Uh, and I could see him going off shorter than 15 to 80 is currently. Great result. Thanks, Peter. Coming up, we have League Action live on Friday night, followed by three more games live on Saturday, then two more massive games live on Sunday. And don't forget, League Action live on Monday night. Then it's over to Europe for the big one, live on Tuesday. Then the even bigger one, live on Wednesday. Then it's the other Europe. Sometimes a break isn't a bad idea. So, if ever you want to take time out from betting, use Paddy Power's Take a Break tool to pause your account. Paddy Power. Right, when we left you, Rory, uh, Joe had mentioned that uh, Cole Potter, big fan, but I was hoping to get your thoughts on Brighter Days Ahead because I know you're a big fan. Yeah, I'm a, a massive fan. The, 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 my approach to this race is hopefully Gordon gets a winner with one of his fancy horses in the first couple of days. If, um, uh, and uh, at the, the time of uh, of speaking, um, Jerry Colomb is, is weak in the betting um, for, uh, for his um, run on the bowl, which we won't know the result of. Um, and if he disappoints there, you'd have to be worried about the horses. But I'm hoping that so that either Jerry Colom or one of, or one of Gordon's other um, obvious candidates um, shows the team to be in decent form. And if that's the case, I'll be bright, backing brighter days ahead here. It'd be interesting to see how she goes in the market. She is, of course, also a half sister to Caldwell Potter. Um, worth uh, worth uh, pointing that out. Um, there's very little between them on the ratings. He's rated a pound higher than her, but. My my standpoint on her from day one 
has been that she has just enormous potential. Uh, and we just scratched the surface so far. So she won the the Apples Jade uh, the other day. It was <laughs> Cheltenham was was uh, a farrago uh, for me. Again, you know, we, we've touched on that. It, it became a tactical race, which didn't suit her. Um, and she's ended up getting uh, blindsided um, by uh, Golden Ace or Golden Love or whatever she's called. Um, but she's better than that. And if she's, she just wants to be made use of. She wants to, she wants to, to, to uh, go out in front um, and, uh, and make the running here, in my view. I think she's, she's a horse you don't want to mess around with at all. She's a dawn run, effectively, is what I'm going to say about her in every possible sense. Um, and I hope that she's healthy enough to run. And if she is, I, um, I expect her to, um, to win and win well. Um, obviously, the stable form stops me being super confident about, about that at this stage, but hopefully the signs will be, will be better by Saturday and I'll be getting stuck in. You just had your um, Nicky Henderson fish cake moment there, you know that? Golden yeah, Ace, but whatever, whatever, whatever he's <laughs> called, like yeah, whatever, she's whatever she's called, called. yeah, 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 fish pond, yeah, well, pond fish, think. whatever. Yeah. <laughs> uh, right, okay. Brighter days ahead. We hope that the Elliot team are in good form and she can show exactly what she's made of. Colwell Potter for Joe, fascinating novice hurdle. Joe for one fifty five. Really looking forward to the Mersey. Uh, on to the handicap chase over three miles and a furlong. Uh, this is registered as the freebooter handicap. To Cribilly is the favourite. Lots to talk about him going into Cheltenham. And he ran well. He just bumped into Shake Him Up Harry, who may well have won at the Aintree Festival by now. Uh, it's 5 to 1, the King of Rye Hope. Forward plan, Francie Honeyball, 6 to 1. Twig for Ben Pauling. He ran a huge race at Cheltenham behind County Classico, who also may well have won at uh, Aintree by now. 7 to 1, Cruise Control, and it's double figure odds the rest. Right, Rory, off you go. Uh, tough race, as you would expect. I thought the value lay with um, forward plan here. Uh, for Anthony Honeyball and regular rider Ben Godfrey, so I wouldn't read too much into the um, the riding plans for the uh, the Honeyball horses. Um, he's he's always who tends to be strong at the end of his races. He's largely progressive. He just needed the run on his return in the Badger Beer at Wincanton. Um, he he moved up going well there from the rear of the field and then didn't get home. And he's he's built on that in every run since. He was a winner at Doncaster over three miles, then just got touched off, finishing best of all in the Sky Bet Chase at Doncaster on his next start and then went on to win another um, high-profile race, what was the Racing Post Chase back in the day, Kendall, which is now what the Coral something or other Coral Trophy handicap oh, chase, yeah. uh, where he was maybe only fifth jumping the last, but really flew home to win. And what he wants is a little bit of a stiffer test than a dead three miles, which he gets here. Um, his run style is, is uh, ideal for it. He's a, a sound jumper who finds plenty for pressure as a rule. And I see no reason why why the handicapper should have gone on now. He's only five pounds higher than he was for his reappearance. And he seems to have come on on leaps and bounds in his last three runs. So he still looks well handicapped to me with 10 stone 11 on his back. Uh, the extra furlong or so here will help. And Ben Godfrey knows him very well. So ticks all the boxes for me. Forward plan for Rory. Joe Log. Yeah, this is uh, the race on Saturday that I'd be least strongest on. I thought it was tough. Um, but... As a selection, Twig is, is the one I'd side for. He's about six to one again. It, it's not a World Cup price. It's probably shorter than ideal, but, um, no, I think, I think he's a solid horse. He, he's very consistent winning twice at the end of last season and then came out of Chelham October meet and, and was beaten three lengths by Wacker Clan, uh, who ran a cracker in the Kim York hit coming third. Uh, and then they, then they sent Twig off nine to one for the, um, for the Carl, Carl Trophy at Newbury in December and I sent Twig off at nine to one for the Carl Trophy. At <laughs> <laughs> no. Bur burned fingers. He was he was he was way down the field, but look, they, they freshened him up, put him away for the winter and brought him back out at the Cheltenham Festival where he came second and ran a cracker to Canty Classico um off a of mark of one forty trees off one forty seven here. It's it's not too stiff of a of a hike. He, he's a horse that runs his race, like I said. Um, and look, he could be second behind a grade one winner by, by the time this race is run. So look, it's hard to know, but it's not a race that I have strong view on, but Twig is the selection. That's fine. Board plan and Twig for the lads in the 2.30 at Aintree. On to the race before the National, which as always, or at least 
recent uh, history has been the Liverpool hurdle, the staying hurdle of Aintree Flooring. Of course, a shame Tio Poo doesn't run, but he doesn't. Uh, Flooring Porter, who of course was closest to Tio Poo at Cheltenham, is your 11 to 4 favourite opening show. 6 to 1 sire de Burley, 12 years young and winner of the race last year. 13 to 2 Crambo for Fergal O'Brien. Uh, Johnny, uh, Jonathan Burke rides. I assume Paddy Brennan's ban must kick in at this stage. I'm not sure if that's the case. 7 to 1 Hidden Valley Lake. Botox at is eight to one. Buddy one is also eight to one. Nine to one strong leader. And there's Elf Fish Cake himself, Monk Monkfish at tens. All right, Joe, the Liverpool hurdle. I think Paddy Brennan still is riding. I think it's just uh, Johnny Burke is regular rider for Crambo as far as I know. Oh. I think that's owner's call, I think. Yeah, um, okay. My, but you're dead but, right. Yeah, I don't see Paddy Brennan uh, having ridden him at all. So yeah, so I, I wouldn't be too off, off put by that or anything. I think he's a regular rider. I, th- I thought this was a race that... Um, is tough, but I think you can knock a few of them here. I thought Buddy One ran a cracker in the stairs, to be fair. I'd like to see him back it up, and then certainly wouldn't be one that I'd be siding with. Botox has is very solid. And to be honest with you, I, I'm maybe it's wrong to do, but I'm kind of eliminating um, some of the old boys here. Drashel, Drasher, Champ, um, Hewick. Like, this is plan Z for Hewick. First, there was Cheltenham Gold Cup, then it was Aintree Grand National, then it was the bowl, and then it's here over hurdles. It's just like has to be a huge negative. And uh, Monkfish again is one that has been fairly disappointing since you know he did show a bit of gore and in the I think it was the Red Mills that day, was it? Um yeah, yeah. look I, Yeah, so look, I I'm going for one here. I've actually backed this lad already at 14s. Um so I'm kind of on on my high horse here. Um by Hidden Valley Lake um for Rob Court team. Obviously, like you said, Tiupu and Irish Point don't show up. Uh, Rachel taking the ride and he, he's a horse that's still very unexposed. Um look he's good form to his name, beating Cool Survivor over hurdles in a in a grade three in Mallow before being turned over last season at short odds to Monty Star in the Mercedes Benz of Clonmel. Um he was kind of well touted for the Albert Barta last year, but you know he, that kind of knocked his reputation a small bit being turned over at Clonmel and, and then look he, he ran down the field uh, in the Albert Bartlett but things haven't really gone to plan he's kind of missed a bit of time here and there he might be the easiest to train but um, I thought he was really good last time out winning the Boyne Hurdle um, De Capo Beacon Edge is in second De Capo Glory is in third and De Capo Glory ran a cracker in the Coral Cup uh, after being in the in the kind of the box seat the whole way um, Rob Corr a kind of spoiled um with choice in this kind of a division here. They have so many horses that are a similar type. Uh, I think it's a big vote of confidence that they've just had the one bullet here with the Hidden Valley Lake. Um, yeah, like I said, he's totally unexposed and, and he looks tailor-made for this. I think he's a cracking bet. You snuck in. Uh, I backed him at 14s, Joe. Ba, ba, ra, ba, bum, the, trumpet, uh, the trumpet goes. Uh, well done. Well done. Let's see what happens with Hidden Valley Lake 7-1 to one at the time of recording. All right, Rory, your take on the Liverpool hurdle? Yeah, more more negatives than positives in this race. That's generally been the case in the, in the Stairs division. Um, I the fact that I thought Sarah de Berle might be the might be the bet here tells you what what I thought of the race. He's the ground in circles. Um, he would have needed his first two runs um, this season because he's always quite stuffy. Sarah de Berle, I thought he ran very well in the um, in the Stairs last time out. So I can see him still playing a part. You know, he is he's. He's six to one as a twelve-year-old in the Grid One for a yard that's out of form. So you know you can't really, um, you you really want to see something coming through and, and showing improved form here. I think Joe's um, uh, landed on one of the obvious ones in that regard in Hidden Valley Lake. Um, I completely agree with everything he said about about the uh, the horse. Um, he's he's thoroughly unexposed because chasing was was uh, put on the um, on the back shelf very quickly after one run. Both he and Monty Star, they basically took each other out, didn't they, at, um, at Clonmel last season, and both of them ran below form in the Albert Bartlett. Monty Star has shown that, you know, they're both very good horses, um, and given a bit of a break uh, coming through, I can see Hidden Valley Lake doing better. I don't think the Boyne Hurdle form is very good, though. That's the only the only thing. And, and he's, again, he's quite well found in the market at the prices. I I'm not going to have a bet in this race as it stands at the moment, but I will put up a different selection on similar sort of grounds. I didn't think Crambo had the chance the market suggested in the stairs hurdle last time out um, with his win in the long walk. Again, being against the old timers, um, and he is a horse who um, uh, who probably needs a little bit more experience or needed a little bit more experience there to to show what he could do. Um, with that run behind him, I see I see him running a lot better. He's run well at the entry before. He was well beaten in the Grade One novice over two and a half miles here last season, but he was hampered in the run 
and shipped an awful lot better than the distance beaten suggested. And then he absolutely bolted up on his reappearance here um, on soft ground over two and a half miles. So the track suits him well. Um, he, you know, he, whether he's really a grade one horse at this stage is a question mark, but it's a question you can put to every single runner in this race at the moment. Uh, you know, bar Florian Porter and, and Sarah de Berle, who have been there and done it, are maybe just slightly on the downgrade. Florian Porter got a lovely ride in the in the um, the stairs hurdle last time out, just like he did when he won the race a couple of years ago. But he was beaten here after that, and it's asking a lot for him to to go and win again. So I'll put Cramble forward as a selection, but it'll be uh, you might get fifty p out of me at this stage. I don't think I'll be having a big bet. Tokenist of token selections there uh, for, with Crambo, but Hidden Valley Lake uh, certainly stronger from Joe. All right, that leads us all the way up to the Grand National. Six places each way for the National. Uh, not only do we want the winner, folks, you're going to give us the TriCast as well. In the correct order, uh, please, as well, uh, the TriCast. Just a quick check on the betting on Thursday afternoon, just about an hour or two hours after the decks came through. Five to one Corak Rambler, seven to one Iron Maximus, eight to one Meeting of the Waters, nines Vanillier, ten to one Panda Boy, and then you've got double figure odds, including Mark Walsh on Limerick Lace at fourteen to one, uh, Manila Indo for Rachel at sixteen to one, Delta Work Class Animal twenty to one, Noble Yates is twenty to one as well, and then um, a horse who sent off ten to one for the race last year, but is five times bigger this year. Ain't that a shame? Is that how? bad poor old Dave Maxwell is is he five times worse than uh, than Rachel Blackmore I don't know but uh, ain't that a shame 50 to 1 okay lads first off I'd like a winner and then we'll go into your tricast so winner of the Grand National 2024 Rory DeLarge is and a boy why Oh, you want to know why as well? Really? Oh, uh, yeah, I've we may as well. We may as well. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've been sweet and hand boy for for a long time. He's just got the he's got the perfect profile. He's an eight year old who was um, not been far in the Irish National last season. The Irish National, the previous year's Irish Nationals, is the perfect um, uh, sounding board, if you like, for for future Grand National horses. Since then, he has finished second in the Paddy Power Handicap Chase at uh, Leperside at Christmas, having finished third in the same race the previous season. Obviously higher in the weights. He was giving um, lumps of weights and meaning of the waters that day and is much better off at the weights now. Uh, and then he typically reverted to hurdles next time for his final prep run and ran a cracker there, one beaten just over, well, beaten two and a quarter lengths um, and a competitive handicap at the Dublin Racing Festival. Martin Brassel is as good a trainer as there has been in a long time for preparing horses for the Grand National. I know he's only got one win to his name in it, but you know, um, the, guy, the guy's very... Very, very good at laying a horse like this out. And I love the fact that Panda Boy was always going to be right on the cutoff. You know, he might get in the race, he might not get in the race. Wasn't entered in the Irish National, wasn't entered in the Scottish National, wasn't entered in the Topham, wasn't entered in the Bet365 Gold Cup. No entries at all. Wasn't wasn't entered, I think he was entered briefly at Cheltenham for, for one of the handicaps, but came out before the confirmations. So basically, this has been the only race for him. Um, all season, and Martin Brazel has not wanted to be deflected from that at all. Tenstone 7 on his back, right at the bottom of the weights, um, jumps well, stays, all the attributes. And I think you need you need to be um, low down the weights ideally in a race. I think it's very hard to carry weights still in the Grand National. That, that period where the handicapper was given you know, top-class horses a real chance by dropping them five or six pounds, that air is gone as well. And I think even though, you know, you get some good horses towards the top of the weights here, I think it's horses who've been laid out for the national and get in um, towards the bottom of the weights are the ones you want to concentrate on. And Panda Boy just hits all the targets for me. Thank you very much. That's a solid reason why Panda Boy will win. I'll come back for your TriCast. Joe Logue, winner of the national, please. Going for one that's high in the weights, which again, like you mentioned, the punters panel, um, is on YouTube to watch and Frank had some good stats about um, soft ground and horses with low weights but I really like Coco Beach here just he, he's a genuine horse who runs his race he he won the Tritown and heavy beating Limerick Ra Lace who's also well touted for this and he had a great run run in the beach here so you know he takes the defences um, he won a good cross country at Punchestown and I actually fancy him to win at Cheltenham he just loves loves soft ground loves you know marathon trips um Jordan Gaffer is going to get a cracking ride off him. Uh, he is high in the weights, but uh, he's just going to relish the test. 
Happy days. All right, Coco Beach uh, is your main pick. Okay, back to you, Rory. Your tricast, please. We know, obviously, Panda Boy first. Who finishes second and third? Uh, well, I was originally quite keen on uh, Desenmore High sneaking in um, with one or two non-runners in this race. That hasn't happened. Um, so, listen, if you if you like... Um, if you like his chances based on, on that percent of Christmas, then you've got to give Meeting of the Waters a chance as well. Again, gets in off a low weight. He's only a seven-year-old. They can't win the race, but of course, uh, nobody has proved that proved that's no longer the case. Uh, or or he was just a massive um, blot a couple of years ago. I think seven-year-olds were getting to the stage now where they will be winning Grand Nationals and Meeting of the Waters uh, would be one you'd have to have on your side there. Uh, and for third... Ooh, Coco Beach is very close to it. He's very close to it. I have to say, um, you're not. But I'm. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna bypass him and go for. Um, let's look at this. Look at it too. Try to decide between the pair of them. Um, Rory's choice here. I'm gonna. I'm gonna stick Gallia de la Toe in there. Fran yeah, Berry had, had her time. in the place as well. Yeah, Fran Berry this no. morning uh, earlier on in the Fridays of Fran, he had Gallia de la Torre running a big race. So I've just come I've just come around to her in the last day or two. Um I saw someone else tip her up during the week and I thought I can't really have her. And then when I was looking at her well, when I was looking for her in the weights, th- this is the key. I'm I'm looking I'm looking at around number ten or twelve for her mm-hmm. name. And actually she's number thirty with ten stone seven for a grade one mare, as she has been in the past. Um, I thought she was she was um, on a decent looking mark, uh, and obviously she was second over two mile three mile five at at, at uh, Warwick in the classic chase early in the season. You just got to forgive her that poor run at Exeter after that. Which I suppose the argument there is, although she's won once right handed, her two worst efforts have come at right handed tracks. Uh, she was very disappointing, of course, in the Cotto Star when really strongly fancied for that as a novice jumping really badly whereas her jumping is normally really good left-handed so I think the key to her might just be keeping her on a left-handed track and these skeletons they know what they're doing with horses don't they? They're alright aren't they? See these handicaps say alright okay Panda Boy first meeting the water second Galli de la Toe third is Roy DeLarge's tricast in the National Joe Logue's tricast in the National is? Uh, second is going to be Limerick Lace anyway PK Um yeah, look, she, she has a nice lightweight. It's kind of the opposite of Coco Beach, really. But look, I, I think she was impressive at Cheltenham, needing every yard of, of the two and a half mile trip, beating um, Dino Blue that day. And look, she's related to proper stairs. She's from the family of, um, I like the way you're thinking, and I know the way you're thinking, who we all know get further than three miles. Um, she was second in Detroit town to Coco Beach. She was really well back that day, uh, off of Marker 141, Aiden Kelly taking off five. Um, so yeah, look again. The trip is a little bit of an unknown, especially on on the ground. But uh, on breeding, she should be banged there. And uh, you know, Frank Berry came up, out during the week and said that uh, Paul Townend's picked Diane Maximus, and and Mark got the choice of the rest of JPs, and he's picked Limerick Lace. So look, that can only be a good thing. Um, third is going to be kind of have my eye on him for a long time, and he's look, he's not he's not overlooked in the market by in the market by any means. But Vanillier, I think, is. Is one that's very interesting again from the from the Cromwell yard. He could have the second and third here, according to my book. But um, yeah, look, he 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 was fifteen lengths down nearly at, at the last fence last year, and he finished with a rattle, but could only manage second. Uh, since then, on the form book, he's been very disappointing. Um, but this has just been the plan, hasn't it? Um, Cromwell's a, amazing target trainer. Um, yeah, look, I, I just think he has to go close. Look. I couldn't put anyone off him. And again, it's more of a selection that because I've been looking at him for so long for this race, um, I kind of don't want to abandon him now. So Coco Beach, Limerick Lace and Vanillier for me. There you go. That's Joe's one, two, three, four, the You've National. Only Vanillier there for third because Fakir Delane didn't make the company and otherwise <laughs> it would have been the, would have been the first three from the Troy Town, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> The only race Joe watches all year. Yeah. <laughs> only, just, just, just watch the toys. There's your top three in the national lads. There you go. Forget about the rest of the season. That's it. Done. Lovely. Uh, so Gavin Cromwell, God, oh, he'd be good at second and third there, according to Joe. Or maybe, maybe it's not a lot of prize money, but uh, oh, so close. But a winner with Cocoa Beach. Uh, Gordon's third, fourth, fourth national. He got two with Tiger Roll, one with Silver Birch. He not another one, has he? That's it, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, it would be his fourth. Um should he do it? Okay, right. That's the Grand National wrapped up beautifully. And uh, not a single mention, not an utterance, not a word for Cora Crambler, interestingly. 
Say no more. It's interesting. Uh, five. Got, we've got the races that kind of everyone forgets about, the two after the national, but let's try and find a couple of winners. One of them is a great one. It's the McGull Novice Chase over two miles. The Arkle of Aintree found a 50, nine to four. Uh, Etalon, or Etalon, uh, for Dan Skelton, five to one. 11 to two, Urki de Sui. Uh, it is eight to one, Liberty Hunter, 10 to one, Jello, Matata's tens, as is Nickelback and Quilixios. All right, uh, Joe, you're back up for the McGull. Yeah, tough enough race again. Um, Bound of 50 is is the favourite here, I'd imagine. Um, look, ran a cracker in the Arkle, in fairness. I, I was a bit concerned with his jumping out to the right, uh, going left-handed around Sheldon. But uh, look, he's well beaten by Gaelic Warrior, but did run well. Again, we're, I know I put up Coco Beach for the National. Again, it's it's a little bit concerned of the stable form. So I'm kind of looking to avoid him, really, to be honest. And I'm going to side with my selection for the Arkle. And that was Quilixios. Um I don't know what Rachel Blackmore was doing at the start here on, on Quilixios because like, you could tear up your docket straight away. She was left eight or ten lengths down as soon as they jumped. Um, she just kind of seemed to be distracted or something, I don't know, and yeah, kind of she, missed the break. Yeah, she thought it was going to be a false start. Oh, did she? she okay. It was going to be a false start and I think Rachel decided, right, well, that's, this isn't a go. And then it was. Right. That was Interesting. It. And then, then, then he was hampered uh, by Fowler at the second as well and that was curtains for his chances. Um, look, I'm, I, I'm inclined to draw a line through it um, people always look at how horses finish a race, but um, you know how they start a race is, is as important. And and he had no chance in the start by my book. So look, I, I thought he improved that Nace uh, before Cheltenham dropping back to two miles. I think his jumping solid. Um, I think he'd be able to get a nice position here if he jumps off properly. And um, yeah, look, I think it's more of a negative stable form for Founder Fifty and the fact that he jumps out to a right, out to his right on a, on a tighter track than Cheltenham. So. Um, yeah, look, I think it's a, it's a tough race pick the winner, but Kralixas is about 10 to 1. Again, we can play it each way. 10 runners here. So, um, yeah, Kralixas 10 to 1 each way is the way I'm going. What is interesting, the stewards had Henry de Bromhead in after the arc to ask for the horses, uh, the explanation for the horses' poor form. I would have thought that he would have just gone, look at the start of the race, lads. See you yeah. later. You, <laughs> you, you, know, have like, to, you have to say that. If you, if you don't mention the horse started slowly, you can get in trouble even if the horse started slowly. I remember when... When the rule came in, um, oh, maybe, I don't know, 10 or 15 years ago, I remember Barry Hills at a two-year-old who missed the break completely on his debut and then won the next time out. And they had him in saying, explain the, the improvement in form. He goes, well, the horse missed the break on debut. They said, well, you didn't mention that. Jeez, you didn't know that at all. You get fined for it. Well, like, so, actually, to, to I'm going off the race and post comments. Trainer had no explanation for the poor form shown at, at Cheltenham. And I'm just like, What? I mean, one, why was he asked? Two, he should have then said one of the two things that you mentioned, Joe, the horse is hampered as well. So really yeah, like curious. It's because because when the races are jumping at Cheltenham, we're, you know, it's obviously hectic in, in the trading room and we're making sure that the exchange goes in running and that everything goes off site. And, and then, you know, you're kind of missed maybe the first 15 seconds of the race and looking up at the TV is kind of, Jesus, where's, where's Calixios gone? And then came into the picture. And she, she, yeah, <laughs> she had to use loads of gas to get up there and then was yeah, hampered yeah. by a fall at the second and that was it. That was it, game over. All right, Rory, you're taking the McGull? Uh, yeah, I think recently, straight, well, not straightforward, but I think that it, the, the selection is fairly straightforward here. I don't see how Nickelback can be a double figure price when he's absolutely bolted up on a great one already this season. Um, was immediately put put aside for this. Um, Sarah Humphrey said after he won the uh, uh, the Silly Isles that he would he wouldn't go to Cheltenham. She didn't think the track would suit him, and he would go to Entry instead, and he'd be prepared for that. And um, he won that by the race was over at halfway, virtually, wasn't it at Sandown? And yeah. it wasn't a case of, of him catching them on the hop. He's just, when he um, when he gets into a rhythm, uh, he's an exceptionally hard horse to catch. And although he was beaten once or twice earlier in the season, um, he um, he made a couple of made a couple of mistakes at Newbury uh, when Hermes Allen beat him, and he would have turned that form around had the, you know the the latter not had that fatal fall at, at, at Sandown. He ran very well at Kempton in between times, um, and Aintree and Softbright will suit him really well. I don't think he's particularly happy going right-handed as he as he showed at um, at Kempton, but still ran with credit there and, and showed real guts. Um, and he's nice and fresh for this. I don't think this is a, a great collection of uh, two milers. I have the same slight concerns about Finder Fifty, who's the obvious form horse in the race. Um, he did well well in the Arco, but I'm not sure that the entry will suit him ideally. And uh, although Colexios had those, I ended up backing him in the Arco, essentially on the back of Joe's recommendation, because I didn't like anything else in the race. And I came round to him, even though I thought it was a bit of a negative. I thought even with the excuses he had, uh, he didn't show an awful lot through the, the middle part of the race. I know I, I know you can very easily put a line through it, but 
Um, I I wasn't often I'll see a race like this and go right. I'll forgive that and back him next time. I wasn't inclined to back Alexios again um, after the way he he shipped in the article. I don't think he's got the I don't think he's got the natural tool for two miles anymore. Um, so uh, I'm less forgiving than Joe is, and I just think you know Nickelback he can't afford to get any of these fences wrong, but he is he's fundamentally a very bold jumper. He's just a, sometimes a bit impetuous is what you might describe him as, but he's, he's best just being given his head and, and allowed to jump his fences. Uh, and obviously if he gets one wrong, it can be disastrous for him. He can lose all his momentum, but he didn't get any wrong last time. Um, he didn't get any wrong when he bolted up on debut at Stratford. Uh, I'm sure everything was at Warwick. He bolted up and then he won again at Stratford and was shaken. Uh, were he a good horses in behind him that day? And yeah, his form stacks up really well. I, I don't think he can really be a 10 to one shot in this race. And he must be my choice as a result. Nickelback uh, for Rory in the Magull. And if you back him and he wins, don't forget to buy tickets for their upcoming dates in Manchester, Glasgow and London and Birmingham in uh, late May. There you go. If you do fancy seeing, I only know two of their songs. One where he holds the photograph and then never made it as a wise man. Couldn't cut it as a yeah. poor man something. Anyway, Nickelback. Right, one more race. Uh, the 5.35, which is the concluding race of the Entry Festival. It is the bumper. It's a grade two. And Mr. Megat uh, for John Joe O'Neill, junior and senior in those late Trevor Hemmings colours is two for two and the 15 to eight favourite. 15 is two, Moshan two. Ollie Murphy's got Castle Ivers at nine to one. Where's Willie Mullins? He doesn't seem to have a runner. Uh, he won the first race of the festival, by the way. Just a heads up. Um, uh, right, uh, because I know this is in your real bag, Rory, I'm going to go to Joe first. Um, yeah, it's not entirely my bag either, to be honest. Um, That's okay. Look, uh, obviously priced a lot of English racing, but I'd be a lot more comfortable with Irish bumpers than I would be English bumpers. But the one that clearly stood out to me is a missed in the market. And look, it is the favourite, Mr. Meggett. Um, he's won very easily twice. He was impressive at Carlisle. He won by 12 lengths. Form looks good. The, the second, third and fourth have all won over hurdles since. Um, and then he came up and hosed up on the bridle under a penalty at Doncaster on, on bottomless ground, which bode well here. Um, nothing has come out and run since that, so the form is a bit of an unknown, but still with a penalty, it was very impressive. Like, if anyone hasn't seen it, go and watch it back. Um, like, he just, like, didn't break sweat. He, but, you know, 15 to 8 in, in what? How many runners is there here? 19 runner bumper? It wouldn't be for me. I think he's the most likely winner, but... He's not a better 15 days. That's fine. That's fine. You don't have to have an opinion in every race. Um, Mr. Megat, Mr. McGate, McGate, McGate. Uh, Rory? <laughs> yeah, I think you should have stopped with the last race, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> Rory's going to put the yeah, mockers well, on the John Joe horse, isn't he? Terrible climax to, to, to <laughs> go from the, the Grand National to a grade one novice to a bumper. Not, yeah, we already, no, have, no. We, we, we already have too many bumpers anyway. Um, <laughs> See, arg yeah. arguably, arguably, there should be like four a season. There you go. I'll, uh, we'll get that passed. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we'll get that. <laughs> we'll get that. Okay, look, I'm, I'm nodding away, so I'm no selection of bumper. No selection for me in the bumper. That's no. fine. Absolutely fine. We, we will be your best bets on a Saturday's card at Aintree. And where will it be? Who will it be? Let's go, Joe Logue. Nap of Saturday, please. I'll go to Rory first because if he naps brighter days ahead, I won't nap Caudill Potter. So I'll give well, you Rory... Don't, you don't fancy a battle. You don't fancy head to head. Well, no? like, we, want, we want to give people choice. I mean, my, my nap would be Caudill Potter. Um, like I've played the case earlier. <laughs> I think he's really solid. But again, I don't want to go against Rory either, if that makes sense. Um, but look, I suppose we can give a nap next best. Caudill Potter, nap of Saturday, next best would probably be... Um, Oh, God, I'm after digging a hole for myself here. Um, <laughs> Hidden Valley Lake. Go for the Grand, go for the Grand National. <laughs> yeah, Hidden Valley. <laughs> Hidden, Na Naf Caldwell Potter, next best Hidden Valley Lake in the Liverpool Hurdle. Okay, all right. So those are in the Coy Potters in the 155 and Hidden Valley Lake in the 305. Roar your nap on Saturday. I'm napping Panda Boy. He's oh. got the national. He's got the national. No mucking about in the Grand National Panda Boy, and hopefully he remains a double figure price uh, for it. Uh, brilliant stuff, lads. Really appreciate uh, having a good look at all. Well, we looked at Saturday, but as I said, we recorded on Thursday. We have just seen in the background Illite Tom win the first race of the Entry Festival for that man Willie Mullins. One wonders how many more races he's going to win over the course of the next few days. Lads, where are you going to watch the national? Where are you going to watch the national, Joe Logue? 
You're going like everyone's going to think I'm a dosser PK, but I'm actually off on Saturday. Um, I've been off a lot the last few weeks, which is unreal. Um, the fellow does the road uh, in work, text me, and he said, "Do you want Grand National Saturday off?" I said, "Yeah, I'll take it if it's going." So, um, I'll probably watch it at home and then go for a few pints because we have a work night out after. So I might start a little bit early and. Uh, yeah. Oh, you're, you're coming into work for for the drinks. The yeah, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. The, drink, the drinks and pizza, Rory. <laughs> where's uh, Where's the night out? I don't see any invites in my emails. Um, is, it Niall O'Reilly? is it Nile O'Reilly? I need to ask. Uh, yeah, I suppose you could request there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's, all right. So, you could try that. <laughs> where is it? Where is uh, it? Ranla, I think. Yeah, yeah, no, I know. There's loads of pubs in Ranelagh. Come on, yeah, you'll have to that. find us, PK. <laughs> <laughs> right, in I pop into Max Orley's, uh, Smith's. Uh, it'll be one of those two. I guess it's only going to be one of those two, right? Um, right, will you enjoy your day off watching the National? Um, Roy Delargy? I shall hopefully be watching it here in, in sunny Hampshire, just to clarify uh, where I am. Although I shall be heading off to, oh, Lord. Uh oh. Possibly Dorset or possibly Somerset. So the Somerset Dorset border uh in the evening. So, you know, oh. just I know you like to know where I am. Yeah. We've been invited invited for the uh, weekends by friends who live down that neck of the woods. Near near Salisbury race course. So well not that near, obviously, because you know, people say, Well, I think if I'm Salisbury is nowhere near Dorset, but it's it's not that far away from Salisbury. So well, those people are have to check their priorities uh, if that's the case. Um, I'm going to be watching on my phone in Glendalough. I have oh. not done well here, lads. I've 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 really really had a I've had a bad one. Basically, she's who, who yeah. do you like for PK? Who are you going to be looking out for on the phone? Um, by putting you on the spot now, you surely you have picked out, do you? You've definitely you've definitely put me. On. I'm I'm actually I'm just gonna like I always I'll just I'm just gonna piggyback. Rory's quite sweet on Panda Boys, so I'm just gonna back that. Yeah, and um, you watch on your phone what you want is a sort of a grey horse in grey colours. Exactly. Spot, yeah. Spot fairly exactly. easily. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So she, the missus, she uh, in one of the WhatsApp groups, there's a lad who's a mad fan of just he's a he's ex actually special forces. He's great crack, and he used to be out in Bosnia and stuff. And he's he's just a mad, but he's great fun. And he just sent on this. There's a bushwhacker trial, like you learn about all the skills about lighting fires and putting up tents and all this sort of crack in Wicklow I was like yeah sounds great yeah good skills to know did I look at the date did I look at the date no I didn't uh, so I'll be watching so when, we're, when I've built my or lit my fourth fire or failed to I'm going to go sorry bud uh, you can stop talking to me there yeah I am just I have to watch this race sorry I'm pretty sure you get <laughs> the internet in Glendalough it'll be absolutely fine right um, Glendalough yeah. is, is famous for its internet famous for good service <laughs> Oh, I've had an absolute mare. But then the yeah, Leinster it's, game... It's actually Leinster the games, saint of the internet, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Uh, the Leinster game's at 5.30, so we should be done by then. I'll at least I'll get to one of the local boozers um, and I'll be able to watch that at 5.30. So I got my priorities for Leinster game, but that, I've had an absolute shocker there. I really, really have. But anyway, typical. You don't just say yes with the, something that looks good. Look at the dates. Look at the dates. God damn it. Um well, lads, enjoy the national. Thanks, Billy, for your one, two, three. Uh, we will be back next week, looking ahead to. I imagine the flat is back, and then of course we've got punch down still to come. So still plenty more jumps racing. Enjoy yet another weekend off, Joe Logue. Uh, disgrace, uh, absolute disgrace. Don't hate me to hate you. I mean, Rory, early Sunday morning though, after the point, so I've drawn a short straw there. Ooh, well, there you go. Yeah. Oh, you can have Saturday off. Yeah, you're in first thing Sunday. <laughs> Um, all right, yeah, no, I can see what they've done there. I've done that before, having done many roster. I've done that before. Dangle a carrot, but then there's a well, bike. You won't want there, Joe. You, you, you won't want a disqualification in the Grand National on uh, on Saturday. Then. That'll be fun to come into fielding all the queries. Oh, Sunday. stop. Yeah, imagine it. Stewards inquiry, disqualified horse, and and a three way dead heat for fifth for <laughs> sixth. What you want? And then, <laughs> and then it says I'm on a hundreds each way. Why am I only getting oh. like whoever had to deal with that eight thirty Wolverhampton last week? Oh, oh. My God! For those who missed, did you see that, Rory? I did. Yeah, yeah. Unbelievable. The contacts. I saw some of the con- I saw some of the questions coming through. The poor punters, like. Oh, a shocker! Um, what, what what I thought was was most shocking about that wasn't. I mean, it's very easy to say, oh, it was, an, it was a disgrace that that was that happened. I thought the starter did what the starter should have done. It actually was a false start. Yeah, yeah. None of the jockeys knew the rule. Yeah, very you few did. You can't pass the post. I mean, it's kind of. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't happen very often, but you'd like to think they're maybe better informed than they are. So, it was so interesting though because I I saw an ex jockey on Twitter saying that usually on like you know. Uh, straight straight tracks you have to go back to the stalls whereas they obviously thought that just looping around the all-weather track is the quickest way yeah. to go and, and forgot about it so 
I was that was a headache. I was actually off for that as well, PK. So um, you're off for that. Come on, Joe. That, you're so that was a headache. Do you even, do you even work? Like <laughs> it's, it's really the question at this stage. Um, listen, lads, I'll let you go. Busy weekend for you, for for particularly you, Joe. Uh, right. Uh, enjoy your weekends, Rory. Thanks, man. We'll talk to you next week. Joe, we'll speak to you when you're next on the podcast. Have a great weekend, folks. Enjoy the national, and we'll be talking to you next week.